Intent is a desire to commit an act for a specific purpose. An intentional tort is when people deliberately cause harm or loss to another person. Intentional torts can be directed towards a person or they could be directed towards property. Assault is when a victim feels they may be in danger of bodily harm. Battery is intentional unauthorized physical contact that the victim considers harmful or offensive. Victims of sexual assault, spousal abuse, and incest want compensation in the civil courts. Medical battery is performing the wrong medical procedure or performing a procedure without the patient's informed consent. Informed consent is not required if it is an emergency. When a person is confined or restrained without consent or legal authority, this is called false imprisonment. Mental suffering is deliberately shocking or scaring someone, causing the victim to suffer mental or physical harm. Some provinces have laws regarding invasion of privacy. Things like health and financial records, emails are considered private. Another example of an intentional tort is malicious persecution. Wrongful persecution of a person without reasonable and probable cause has four requirements. The lack of reasonable, probable grounds for the charge. Two, it's motivated by malice, the desire to harm another. Three, proceedings against the defendant ended in the defendant's favor. And four, the defendant suffered damages as a result of the wrongful proceedings. Defamation of character is injury to a person's reputation or good name by slander or libel. These cases sometimes conflict with the Charter of Rights and Freedoms. Slander is an oral statement or gesture, and libel is permanent, written, or recorded statements. The best defense against defamation is truth, proving that the comments or accusations are true. Other defenses include absolute privilege, the protection from liability from statements made in Parliament, legislatures, or court. Qualified privilege. Protection from liability for statements made in certain situations as long as they're made without malice, for example, teachers and employers. A fair comment. A defense that the comments were honest and made without malice, example, critics who review sports, movies, and so on. We'll now look at intentional torts against property. Trespass. Entering or crossing another person's land without consent or legal authority. Overstaying welcome after one has been asked to leave. Putting an object on someone's property and not removing it. This includes things like trees and branches. A chattel is your personal property. People cannot intentionally interfere with your personal property. Conversion is unauthorized and substantial interference with another's property, which deprives the owner of its use. This is the equivalent to theft in criminal law. Nuisance is an unreasonable interference with the rights of others to enjoy their property. This can be divided into two categories. Private that involves nuisance caused to a specific individual, and public, involving nuisance caused to the general public. Defenses to nuisance include legal authority. An example would be emergency vehicle sirens. They are allowed to make noise after certain hours. Or prescription, that is, one person has been using another person's property for at least 20 years in the same way. Defenses to intentional interference include consent. This is when the defendant feels that they were given permission. Or self-defense. This is used commonly, but the force used cannot be excessive. The defendant must convince the court that they genuinely feared becoming injured. And this can even be used if the defendant threw the first blow. One might use the defense of a third party. This is used when the defendant claims to have been helping another individual, for example, a child. Or defense of property. This is used when the defendant claims to have been protecting their property. 
before reasonable force can be used. The defense of legal authority is used by police officers, security guards, and so on. Examples include cases involving false imprisonment and trespassing. The defense of necessity is used when there is a reasonable excuse explaining the situation. However, the defendant may still be liable for damages caused to property.